In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to find the max number, the maximum number in a data set with make.com. I will show you how to use the max math function with static numbers, and I'll also help you use it with numerical arrays. I'll also show you how to use the numeric aggregator to find the maximum number in a data set. If we haven't met yet, my name is Andy, and if you're looking to level up your make automation skills, then I want to invite you to the CoBuild Collective. It's an automation coaching community where entrepreneurs and freelancers master make.com. All right, I've got a scenario set up here with our three ways we can find the maximum number. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got some numbers coming in from our trigger, 900, 1,000, and 1,100. Uh, just to note, 1,100 is our max number there. That's what we're going to be looking for. So I'm going to run this scenario. And right up here at the top here, I'm using the max function. So this is in the numerical functions. If you go over here, and right here is max. And the way this works is you put the max function and then you put a number and a semicolon. You can put as many numbers as you want in there. I've put the three numbers from our trigger and what that gives us is the max number is 1100. So that's pretty simple to use. The problem is this is not going to work for a data set that has an unknown number of numbers that you want to find the max of. So we're going to go down here and I'm going to show you two examples of how you can use dynamic data and find the max value. So right here, I've got a Google Sheet that I'm retrieving that has 17 values. You can see right over here. And if I look up the max value, the max value out of this list is 10,000. So if we go back over here to make. I'm going to run these into an array aggregator. So we have an array here now of all of our 17 values. And in our next module, I'm going to find out what that max is. So first of all, here's our max function. Inside of that max function, I have a map function. And what that does is it identifies what values we want to use when we figure our max number. So you can see you've got map and I got an array and I've got a zero here. And the zero, if I go over here to my array and hover right here, you can see it says raw colon zero. So this is the raw ID of the numbers coming through our array. And then I have one more function here. This is totally optional, but I wanted to show it to you. I have a format number function. And so I'm doing two decimal places, a period for decimals and a comma for separating thousands. If I hit OK, if we remember our max number is 10,000. If I look here, we've got 10,000. I've got it two decimal points and a comma after the 10. Just a note, if you want to use this downstream in your make scenario, that comma will cause make to look at this as text. So if you want this as a number, do not put that comma in the number. All right, so let's look at our third option here, and it is the numeric aggregator. So I've retrieved the 17 rows of data, or the 17 numbers, and I've put them into a numeric aggregator. The way this works is pretty simple. You give it a source and that source is going to be our Google Sheet. You tell it what function you want to do. In this case, we're going to do the maximum value or maximum number. You can also do the minimum number, a count, a sum, or an average with this same module. I put the number in here from our Google Sheet data, and I hit OK. And if we look at the value here, it gives us the result of 10,000. I prefer using the numeric aggregator. Uh, it seems a little more simple. Next, I want to look at this module where I've formatted the number, and you can see, just like we did up here, we use the format number function that can be found over here in the math functions right there. So I put our result in there. I've said I want two decimal places. I want a period for decimals, and in the, the thousands spot, I've put an empty string. So what happens here is this will come out, and it does not have a comma, and can be used as a number further down our scenario. If you want to learn more about manipulating numerical data in Make, check out this playlist. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.